the first topic which I am going to take today is what is Six Sigma? So, the most common definition of what is Six Sigma or you, which you might have heard very often or read it somewhere is that it is a management technique which reduces the number of defects in any process to 3.4 defects per million opportunities. Now, there is nothing wrong as such with this definition, but what I believe is that it just talks about the statistical terms, it, it just describes Six Sigma in statistical terms, whereas and this limits the scope of Six Sigma. because Six Sigma is cannot be explained only in the statistical terms, it is much wider in its scope. So, it should be dealt as in statistical terms as well as in business terms. So, I am going to explain Six Sigma in both these terms. So, first let me give you a very basic uh, uh, definition of Six Sigma so that you know what does it encompass. So, Six Sigma is a business strategy which includes statistical tools. non-statistical tools, um, change management tools, project management skills, and you can say teamwork skills. Plus a very important roadmap that is DMAC. Uh, this is the portion of the DMAC model which we are going to study throughout this course. This is a very important and effective methodology which is used in Six Sigma. Uh, so, all these tools and techniques and skills when used together, they help any organization to just increase its or boost its return on investment. Right, so all these techniques, it is now it is not only statistical tools, I said it is statistical tools, non statistical tools, project management skills, teamwork skills, and a very effective methodology, DMAC. All these are used together and they help an organization to, uh, to increase or to boost its return on investment, its profits, whatever you can say. And this is done because all these tools are used together to remove the defects and waste from our products and services Plus, this now when we just remove the waste and defects from products or services or from our processes, like the how are we are creating our products and services. So, what happens is that our total, like our cost of poor quality decreases, goes down. Plus, our customers are really happy with our products and services because what they are getting is in defect free, error free services, error free services. So, all this helps to lead which just boosts our profits for any organization. So, this is how Six Sigma helps to just attain good profits and just a good uh, amount of customer loyalty. Now, let us uh, move on and study Six Sigma as I have already told you that I am going to explain it in statistical terms. as well as in business terms. So, in statistical terms as I have already told you that uh, in statistical terms Six Sigma implies 3.4 defects or mistakes per million opportunities, right. So, here what you can notice is that Six Sigma is used to represent the, uh, the variation about the average of the process, right. So, if I have to explain this what is the variation about the average of the process. So, if we have to draw the uh, picture of an ideal process, so it would look like something like this these are our spec limits, this is our mean or an average of the process and this would be something like this where our process is centered around the mean and it is within the spec limits. So, this is an ideal process, but you know that variation is always there and whenever a process is going on and Six Sigma is used to fix this variation. So, first it would just tell you what is the variation in this process. Now, the processes can be like this, 
they can be out of the spec limits or they can uh, they, they are not centered around the, uh, like they are not centered here they, they should be centered here but the peak is here or it is here. So, what you can say is that 6 sigma is first used to represent the variation about the average or a mean of the process right. So, but one thing always remember is that the 6 sigma is not used to count the number of defects in a process, rather it is used to count on the processes which can lead to defects ok. I can explain this by using an example of a call center right. Every day we make a call to a call center to get information about a product or service or something like that. So, I have just taken that example. So, let us study all those processes which can lead to customer dissatisfaction satisfaction or even the lost customer because if the customer would not get his information in a good way. So, he will obviously choose or move to another company if he is not already using those services if you are not having a credit card of a particular company and you use uh, using the, their services call center services to just inquire about the process and you are not getting uh, complete information. So, obviously you will think about some other bank or some other company. So, let us study the process and this uh, the various sub processes which are going on and which can lead to defects and finally, customer dissatisfaction. So, the first thing is that the manner in which the customer is greeted by the customer service representative. Obviously, if you think that uh, the person is not enthusiastic enough to take your call or he is not responding to, uh, like he just he is not very helpful. So, you will just uh, it will just let you down or it will just put you down. So, you would not be interested in talking to him and then the accuracy of accuracy of the information provided by the agent. This is very important because you have just made a call to inquire about certain product or service and if the information provided is not correct then it would lead to customer dissatisfaction. And then is the queue time obviously, you would not be uh, you would not like to wait for a long time before anybody takes your call and same way number of rings before an agent responds. So, wait time is a very crucial factor when it comes to a call center services. And then listening and speaking skills of the agent obviously, it is very clear and then time taken to restore the service when fault is reported. If, uh, if you are having if you are facing any difficulty in using the products or services and you just call those people up and the time they take to fix the issue is also one of the uh, factors which can lead to customer dissatisfaction if they are taking too long or they are not responding properly. So, it would lead to customer dissatisfaction and then the manner in which the call is ended and finally, timely arrival of the requested follow up material. So, this is very very important. So, if you think that you have asked them to just send you some email with all the information and how like what is the time do we have to wait for this information is it timely or not. So, this can also lead to customer dissatisfaction. So, now the <coughs> objective of the six sigma process is to study this complete process. So, what is our objective? So, the objective of any six sigma process is to understand this process completely. You have to understand the various steps so that you can find out where are the defects. First, uh, first step is obviously, you have to understand and study this process and the second one is where are the defects, where are the uh, defects in this process and then, then you have to devise ways or the process improvement techniques so that you can fix these uh, defects. Right. So, your objective is first to study this process, then you have to study where you have to find out where are the defects and then finally, you have to devise ways to fix those defects. So, your focus as a six sigma process, the focus of this process would be on four things. The first thing is nature of defects. So, this is the first thing. So, you have if you are just using this uh, methodology you have to first find out what is the nature of the defects that whether it is due to a human error, it is a technological error or it is a software glitch. So, you have to find out the nature of the defects like here in case number 1 and uh, then finally, 
number this this one that is the manner in which the call is added, uh, ended or the listening and speaking skills of the agent all these are human errors and if there is a glitch like you just ask them to fix up and this uh, software is not being fixed or there is a problem in the software then it's a software problem or you can say if the call just ends abruptly so that's a technological error so you first have to understand the nature of the defects or what kind of defects are there and then second focus should be on why are these defects occurring and their frequency now you have to understand you have to study the process and you have to understand the underlying factors the root causes of why these defects are occurring that is you have to first understand their nature and then you have to study the root causes of all these defects and their frequency that is how often they are occurring it's just a one in a, one in a, once in a while that the customer was not greeted properly or it's a regular habit of that particular representative or any other thing that the just call just got disconnected it was just once or it just happens frequently so so that you can understand the process and then figure out ways to fix those and then the third focus is impact on the customer now we are studying this complete process why we are studying we are studying so that we can see that why our customer is not satisfied with our services so obviously we are going to study the impact of these defects on the customer that how our customer is reacting to those defects and then finally number 4 you have to figure out ways to measure the defects how to measure the defects plus you have to define uh, uh, devise the methods to fix these defects so this is how we can understand six sigma in statistical terms let's move on and study six sigma in business terms so basically in business term six sigma implies increasing the business profitability and this profitability can be increased by this can be increased by driving out waste from our processes plus by lowering the cost of poor quality and by increasing the efficiency or effectiveness of our products and services and by doing this what a company or an organization does is that it meets or even exceeds the customer expectations and when the customer expectations are met this means they are happy with our products and services this leads to the increased business profitability right so basically a six sigma starts with a business strategy so we start with a business strategy because six sigma is a very structured and a methodological approach so you have to follow all the processes and it ends with top down implementation obviously you would have a strategy then to find, get the results you have to implement that strategy by this top down implementation what i mean is that the complete organization all the people from the top ranks to the lower ones have to participate to make it a success 
and the lead, uh, role of the top leadership is very very critical in Six Sigma implementation because if leaders are not enthusiastic or effective or they are not well educated about this technique, this technique is doomed, it will not get you any results. So, what you have to understand is that Six Sigma is a, not a hypothetical approach, it is a very methodological and a scientific approach. It is not that you just put your toe out and just check the water whether it is uh, good enough for swimming or not. So, what I want to say is that Six Sigma replaces the, uh, replaces the intuition based decisions that is what we think is wrong. So, this is your intuition based thinking that the intuition based decisions that we think this is wrong, but Six Sigma replaces it. It says you do not have to think it should be replaced by fact based decisions. This means that what we, uh, we know is wrong. This means Six Sigma is a very, very methodological approach. It uses data, it uses data analysis technique, it listens to its customers, only then it devises methods to improve the products and services. Here I would like to tell you that the, all the products do not need Six Sigma process capability. Just some time back we, uh, we just studied an example of a call center. So, this call center, the same call center just had this uh, focus that they uh, that 90 percent of the customers who are wish or who wish to talk to the customer care representative should be connected to a customer representative within 5 or 6 calls, right. So, this was their target, but they just had a customer survey done so that they can understand their process better and through the survey they found out that the customers were willing to wait even up to 8 to 9 rings if they were informed by some recorded voice that soon they will be connected to a customer representative. So, this is not something which is uncommon, we, every, uh, we, we very often hear these uh, recorded voices and through the same survey they found out that uh, the customers were not very, uh, the customer uh, satisfaction or the customer expectations were not very apparently, they were not very happy if they were connected in two or three calls. So, this does not have much impact on the customer satisfaction. So, what we know is that every process does not have to follow Six Sigma process capability, though there are processes which need process capability which is even higher than Six Sigma. For example, the airline landing, you do not have, you do not have a score for errors over there. So, its process capability is even higher than Six Sigma and then our digital watches, they just, uh, they just uh, function on a process capability which is greater than Six Sigma. So, what I am trying to tell you is that as a Six Sigma professional, your focus should be on listening to what your customer needs are, what your customer demands are or what he thinks about your processes or what are the problems they are facing. So, you should just collect data, collect information and then design your processes. Your focus should be on continuous improvement and the profits are bound to come in.